Hi everybody, Vivian here with a tutorial for Scraps of Darkness Kit Club. I'm using their January kit, which is just amazing. It's very much inspired by the sea and it's called Water Waves. So my husband and I and our little mini zoo of five pets just moved about a week ago from Las Vegas to San Jose and I'm just getting the new house set up. The studio is still a wreck, um, but I did acquire for free all of this great corrugate from boxes of glasses that we had to purchase for the new house. And lucky me, these pieces are already perforated just to sizes perfect for mini albums. So I already made one. And if you're interested, you can check on my blog at contadinak.wordpress.com. I've got one up there already. And um, I decided to make another uh, that's just a little bit longer. And these were some of the corrugate pieces from the that were protecting the longer, larger glasses that we got. So for a nice, strong, very simple binding, I'm just using duct tape to bind the three pieces together. And I'm leaving a little gap in between each piece so that it's really easy to bend this book back and forth. Um, I watched a video, a recent video from Journal Artista, and she shared some mini albums she made using this simple duct tape technique. And she ended up binding her signatures with either elastic bands or ribbons, fibers. I'm going to bind this mini album with some pretty white trim and instead of having it all hang out the outside, which I want to do something else with, I'm actually going to have the trim tie on the inside so it can hide it away nicely. There are some beautiful, beautiful papers in this month's January Waterways kit. Uh, it's a combination of papers from Glitz. This one is from Glitz. Uh, authentique and pink paisley and they all work together so beautifully. Um, Melinda's really so talented at, at putting together these kits. I'm so thankful to be um, a part of this team and to be able to make stuff with the collections of goodies that she puts together for us. They're just really great. They, they're different manufacturers, all new stuff, and it all works together. I couldn't find my distressing tool so because I moved and I can't find anything I need. So I just used my scissors, the inside of my scissors, to distress the edges of these papers, this one sheet of paper that I cut to size. And uh, we're going to use this quite a bit, this medium quite a bit today. It's um, matte medium. And I used this a lot when I did watercolor painting, um, primarily. I really like matte medium because it's thin in consistency and I felt like, especially when I did my watercolors, that it didn't mess at all with the absorbency of my papers. And I want my papers and the stuff that I apply later, I'm really excited to share this with you. I have some really decorative, interesting, natural looking papers. Um, I want to maintain that absorbency. Um, so I'm using matte medium today. So now we're gonna set up a really basic mechanism for our signatures. I couldn't believe it was actually this easy. Um, like I said, I didn't want a really chunky album. I didn't want a chunky mini album with lots of fibers hanging out, out the outside. I wanted that all sort of tucked in on the inside. So, um, and I, I have a plan for the way I want that binding, that spine to look. So I'm just covering up these lengths of white trim and I'm setting up my mechanism. And later on when I have my signatures, um, I'm just going to tie them in on the inside and you'll see how I do that. I'm. You've seen me do this in other videos. I really, really adore masking tape. I use it a lot. I use it in everything. So you'll see me using it in a lot of projects. Um, and I'm just wrinkling it up on the 
the edge of my mini album, right, all covering up the, the spine. And I'm going to do that and have the masking tape sort of extend in an organic fashion out onto the front and back covers of my mini album. Once I've got an amount of masking tape on there that I like, I'm going to add some gesso on top of the masking tape to make that surface more absorbent as I apply media. I'm also brushing some of that gesso on the edges of my project as well to create some distress, but not so much that I completely lose the beauty of the paper underneath. And here you can see um, what that looks like so far. I added one more coat of gesso because I just wanted to cover up a little bit more thoroughly the color of the yellow masking tape. And then um, at this point, I just wanted to tie these trims away so that they didn't get messed up by um, or dirtied by further applications of media. Now here's where it gets really, really fun. Um, I'm so excited to share this with you. Uh, a long time ago when I studied watercolor, um, as an adult at a, a local college, um, we used mulberry paper. And there's so many different types of mulberry paper available. I just use a real basic one with some thicker fibers in it and um, use that to, to watercolor some rocks along the beach and uh, it ended up being a really, really cool effect because the pigment sort of settles in more deeply into the thicker fibers in the mulberry paper. This is another really cool uh, type of mulberry paper with circular shapes in it. Um, so I cut it down to size, but I wanted to rip those edges to keep it really natural looking and adhere that down with some more matte medium. So I laid down a little bit medium underneath and now I'm just painting some on top and I can be sure using the matte medium that um, when I add colors they're gonna set really nicely into this really natural looking fiber and once it gets wet I'm able to sort of manipulate it a little bit more to add more wrinkles and more texture because you know I really like the texture so this month's color and creativity add-ons in the Scraps of Darkness kit for January, you get beautiful shimmery Lumiere paints that I used in my last video. And today I'm going to share a little bit of love for the Pearl X pigment powders, also from Jacquard, that come in the creativity kit, I believe. Um, when you use this technique with pure watercolors, it's a little bit different. I think because it's lacking in those powders, it really settles into the, the fibers of the mulberry paper. With these Pearl X powders, you will see that um, it's going to be so beautifully shimmery. Um, those, those minerals or whatever it is in, in the powder are just gorgeous. They're so fine and they're so rich. And the great thing about them is you can make them as dilute or as concentrated as you want because you've got your gum arabic to mix it with and you can dilute it with water as well. So we'll show you that in just a second. But um, the really really cool thing that happened with these shapes in the mulberry paper is that we ended up, as you'll see later, so this is all just white. Now it's about, once this all dries, you can speed that up with a heat tool. We're going to have these circular ridges that are just like the ridges, the half circular ridges in a clamshell. Uh, I'm going to add some interest with some stamping using a, a small set of Prima stamps that came with the January kit, Waterways. Uh, really cool stamps that add some nice distress. So I'm just going to stamp that all over using some black stays on ink. The stays on is great because when you're working with a lot of media, it's not going to go anywhere. It's permanent. Once it dries, it's absolutely permanent. And I'm going to do it in black and with the larger text stamp that comes with the kit this month, I'm going to use a gray color of stays on ink. 
Once I have the amount of darker contrast in there that I want from my stamping, I'm going to go in there with my Pearlex powders. So these beautiful Pearlex powders, um, I don't want to waste any of it. Oh, here's the stamp set. Very, very useful. I'm going to mix them in these little plastic canisters that I got very, very cheaply, I believe, at, at my local craft store. So with these pigment powders, you can create, quote, watercolors. The consistency is, the, the way the paint settles is not, not exactly like watercolors, but it is nice and loose and liquidy. Um, you want to mix one part gum arabic, and I believe it's four parts. Yes, it's four parts of the Perlex pigment powders from Jackard. And today we're going to start with the 685 Verde Primavera. So one part gum arabic and four parts of the powder. Because I don't want to waste, I'm going to save this and use it on another project once, if there's any left. And you dilute that with water to the consistency that you want. And once that's all mixed up really thoroughly, we can start painting it onto our project. So you can put some more concentrated paint in those nooks and crannies created by the mulberry paper. And you can dilute a little bit over the flatter surfaces, whatever, really. I, I feel like using this technique, nothing is wrong. It all tends, it all, it all works. And the colors that were chosen for us in this kit um, were so perfectly coordinated that everything goes together really, really well. The um, distinctions between media and paper are seamless. You don't even see them. And um, you can blot away where you want the paper to show through more more clearly. There really is no wrong way to do this. The natural looking circular shapes from the mulberry paper and those natural looking folds from the masking tape really do all our work for us. At this point it's just laying on paint and watching where it moves. So I'm going to finish up with the back of my album, making sure to lay in a lot of that beautiful green pigment into the um, thicker fibers from the mulberry paper. And I made sure to leave some areas bare because I want to have a really nice pop of the next color that we add into the mix. And that is the Perlex powder from Jacquard in Aztec Gold. It has the number 658 next to it. Um, so we mix up the Aztec Gold in exactly the same way that we, we mixed up the green. And then we just lay that in there. And because, and we want to make sure that green pigment is still totally wet. So it's kind of a fast and furious type of thing. Um, I have those areas in the center along the binding and on the back portion that I wanted to be primarily that Aztec gold color. And then, you know, with a really light hand, I'm sort of just dropping in the paint and letting it all mix together and watching it move down all the crevices. Really fun. It's really fun to watch that happen. And I think there's a temptation to dilute to go in there and spray, but I'm trying to get more bold in this drizzling effect. So um, I'm not going to do any of that today. Just let it move and really in concentrated streams. So let me get in here. It's still wet, but let me show you all of that amazing texture. So that's from a number of different things. We've got that oyster shell from the mulberry paper. We've got that wrinkling from the masking tape. We've got our stamping for some contrast. And then all those puddles and streams of green and gold. 
the iridescence also very much reminds me of the insides of shells that you find in the ocean. So here's the cover dry. Isn't that shimmer gorgeous? Um, and I have some leaf trim that I've been playing around with a lot. Um, I've just been coiling it into a little abstract nest and gluing it down onto various projects. I think it's it's just lovely. I, I did something like this for a Valentine's Day card for my husband. I'm going to use a butterfly from that Prima um, package that came in the, in the set this month. And that green in that butterfly is, it just matches perfectly with the shimmer in the um, Verde Primavera. So it all just went together really nicely. Um, so I'm going to hot glue down the, um, the little love nest. And um, I'm just going to speed through the addition of embellishments because what I really wanted to share with you was how to create that sort of magical oyster shell effect. I loved these beautiful, delicate little starfish that came in the creativity add-on this month. Um, it's just great to be able to incorporate something real and organic and um, starfish actually are quite symbolic and I, I don't really know that much about them, but they're, they're what little I do know is, is quite fascinating. Anyway, I, I think the undersides are a little bit more interesting to me than the top. So I just adhered those down in um, sort of a natural looking spray using hot glue. The addition of these starfish makes the project a little bit more delicate, so that's just an FYI. I decided to include some of these pretty delicate little sequins from Daris that were included in January's kit for Scraps of Darkness. That iridescence was very much in line with this ocean theme, this seashell theme. Um, and they added just a nice little touch of extra interest into this project. I also put in some um, gems that I had lying on my desk, um, uh, that crystal heart and a little translucent gray circle um, that I had gotten from Michael's a while back. And that's basically it for the exterior of this mini album. Can you believe that was corrugate? That's what I just love about upcycling. That was that was for the headed for the garbage. Um, and now I'm just untying those uh, bindings, and I have these strips of paper. Aren't they? These are all different manufacturers, and they all go together so wonderfully. Um, it's really funky, actually, the way they go together. And um, I've got three strips for each signature. Each strip is 12 inches in length, scored down the center at six inches. And um, I'm just tying those up in this really basic, you don't, I mean, it can't get any more basic than that, this really basic binding. Um, and they're just gonna be three signatures in here leaving plenty of room for the addition of chunk, like embellishments, flowers, tags, pockets, whatever. I love the mixing of patterns in some of these papers that we received in the kit. Um, as you can see, those gold chevrons um, totally are set off by the gold in the Perlex powders that we got. And all those different shades of muted green are also there um, in, the, in the cover of the project. So here it is. Uh, you can alter the inside as well. Um, sometimes I like to leave some remnant that shows you what it once was. So I think I might just leave it as is. I have some stills to share with you. A big thanks to Scraps of Darkness and Melinda for putting together such a gorgeous kit this month. Uh, I had plenty of fun mixing the media with the two tutorials for this month, and I have plenty of paper left over to feed my card making habit, so that I'm very excited about that. Um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. It's Contadina K. 
and I post regularly to my blog, contadinak.wordpress.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye-bye.